Hey, David Neese, welcome to the Protectors, man. Thanks for coming on today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, the reason I want to get you on before the holidays because the holiday is a time of giving, and right now you are working on an Indiegogo for the gift, a documentary film for veterans by veterans. So exactly. let's talk about it, brother. Yeah, you know this uh, guy. This started 15 years ago um, when I was on a flight and I sat next to a young Marine. Me being former Navy, I started, you know, having a conversation with this kid and. Uh, he was just one of those kids with an infectious personality and I was really taken aback by him and I remembered him and, you know, a, a year or two later, um, I found out he was killed. And then I wrote, a, I wrote a story about it. I did a documentary. Let me back up. I did a documentary on a high school football coach I had. He was a Marine at Quezon. He, he said he was going to Vietnam. So I went with him and we, I did a documentary about his return, but they have a message board and when I found out Jason was killed, I wrote a one page story about it and I posted it on their message board. That story somehow ended up getting to Deb Dunham, Jason's mother. Mm -hmm. So I got a phone call from her and I didn't know the number. So I let it go to voicemail. I listened to the message. This is Deb Dunham. I'd really like to talk to you. I read about how you met my son and I didn't call her back. I, I just didn't know. I was, I didn't know what to so two weeks go by and she calls again and I let it go to voicemail. And I literally sat on my for half an hour and I thought to myself, you know, you owe this woman a call. So I picked up the phone and I called her. The thing I said to her was, I've wanted to call you. I just don't know what to say for, to you. And I feel so terrible that you lost your son and sorry seems like too little too late. And that conversation lasted two hours. And a month later, I was on a plane headed to upstate New York and I spent a long weekend with him. And it made me realize why Jason was the person he was. You know, it was because of his parents. I mean, I showed up on their doorstep in this town of 1,200 people in Western New York. And she opened the door and just gave me a big hug. And she said, uh, Where's your bags? And I said, Oh, I checked into that little motel in town. She said, Dan. Go get his bags. He's staying with us. <laughs> and that, that's the kind of people they were. Yeah. So I spent this long weekend with them. And uh, I really got to know who they were. And obviously, it was like, okay, well, this, this is why this kid was the way he was. So I spent the whole weekend there. And, you know, I, I went and paid my respect to his grave. And um, I told the Dunhams, I said, listen, when 3-7 comes back, I'm going to sit his friends down. And I'm going to interview them and get some really nice stories together because I work in TV. I'm an editor. And I'll put a keepsake video together for you. And I did that, you know. But as time went on, I found out what really happened. I had a friend who was a Cobra pilot in the Marine Corps called me one day and said, did you see today's Wall Street Journal? And I said, no. He said, go pick it up. He said, that guy you told me about, he's on the front page. So I, I ran out and got the paper and I started reading it. And that's when I found out what happened, all the details behind what he did. And I, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, my God. So a lot of these Quezon guys said, you know, you should think about doing a documentary on him. So as these guys came back, I, in essence, became really good friends with all his Marines, you know, over a long period of time, these past 15 years. But those initial few months after they got back, I had them down to my house here. And I started doing interviews, man, and they were hard because it, you know, it was four months later, five months after yeah. the fact, and it was real fresh, and it just, it was excruciating, man. And I thought to myself, you know, these guys aren't ready, and I wasn't ready. You know, I was still trying to process all this stuff. So I started the Jason Dunham Scholarship Foundation with another Quezon Marine, and I just pumped all my time into that. And you know, it's it's a lot of work. But we were really excited about doing that. We got our 501c3 for that, and we started rolling with that. Um, and then I kind of put those hard drives on the shelf and said, we'll just wait. You know, and every year, though, <laughs> April rolls around. And I would stare at those drives and say to myself, you need to finish that project. Last year, I was sitting around with another guy, a guy I moved out here with. He's, he's my co-producer, Rick Maluski. And... 
we're talking about how in this industry, you know, we need to do our own thing. We need to go out and shoot something, do a doc, whatever we have to do. Because we're, we're all tired of working for people, right? Because we have our own ideas and stories we want to tell. So he said, hey, how about that Jason Dunham story? And I kind of looked over at him. I said, you want to help me with that? He said, yeah, I think we should. It's a great story. So I called Deb and Dan. You know, I've stayed in touch with them over the years. Um, and I told them what I wanted to do. And they were 110% behind it. They, they listened to what I had to say. I said, listen, I want these guys, all of his Marines, to tell your son's story. You know, I know there was a movie deal in the works with whoever you were dealing with, and it never panned out. I said, but th this is real. I want, I want to hear these guys tell the story. And then as we learn about what Jason did and who he was, that story is not just about him. It's about his Marines because they've, you know, 15 years, I've seen it all. I've seen the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, the drug addiction, the, the drug abuse. It, it's, it's, it, that's why it's so personal to me because it's, I, I've, and I'm still trying to help guys. It's, uh, it's hard, man. It's hard to see because I became these guys were like turned into like my little brothers. You know, they're all 10 years younger than me. Well, you brought up a good point right there is that, you know, uh, we're seeing it a lot. It is it's the veteran community, it's the LEO community, it's first responders. It's trying to process. Right. And it, sometimes it takes years and, and there's a lot of alcohol, there's a drugs, there's just trying to deal with the pain to and, you know, and, and seeing that you're going to have this movie, this documentary, it this is the kind of stuff that we need to see. Absolutely. I know it's kind of selfish, but for the veteran community, there's only less than 1% of us out there, whatever, anymore. Right. Um, we right. need to see these movies. We need these stories told. Absolutely. And, uh, that's why when, I, when we've been like collaborating back and forth here and there, and I'm like, you know what? Let's do whatever we can to get the message out there. And like right now you have the Indiegogo. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But in order for people to kind of get an idea of what's going on, let's let's take a look at a clip. When you go to combat, you can't even paint the full picture for anybody at home. And welcome to modern technology where it you know slows down a little bit. <laughs> the lag. The lag. Let's try that again, guys. I turned into a person who took all that emotion, all that guilt, all that anger, all that frustration. I put it into like a little box and I just fucking buried that bitch as deep as possible inside me. Once you have to put a poncho liner over three dead Marines, it changes everything. People always used to tell me, there's a purpose for you in life. God has a purpose for you. They got not have a purpose. My brothers? I'm like, I don't get it. I think we're going to keep getting into uh I'm going to I'm going to share a clip to that and that's that's all yeah. the Google page but I just watched I watched it today and I was like it's just unbelievable and uh I don't know man it's uh it, this well, you know is definitely yeah you know what's amazing is because I've and this is this is the plus I think for us telling this story because I know these guys so well and I've known them for so long. You know, my, my co-producer, the first interviews we did with Billy up in Washington and Kelly, you know, we're doing the interview and it was, it was a, a long, long interview. And at one point he had to use the restroom. So he got up and Rick turned around. And he said, I can't believe he's telling you all this. And I said, that's because they trust me, you know? So, I mean, they, they've opened up to a level I, I didn't expect, you know, and, 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 you know, they tell me things they don't tell their family. Well, know? that's, and, the, it, and you know, I think the right there, you, you hit it right off the head is you're a veteran. And this is, it's a, it's a movie by veterans for veterans, but it's not just, 
I don't like to say that it's just for veterans. I think this is one of the, this movie needs to be seen by America. Then know that what's been going on for almost two decades now. Right. Right. And that's, and that's, that's my intention. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a, you know, I use that line because I want people for me as a veteran, when I see, when I see a line like that, it's like, Oh wow, a bunch of veterans got together. But I think even Mm -hmm. if just in the civilian world, they're like, wow, that's kind of cool. A bunch of veterans actually got together to tell this story, you know, but I hope people who aren't veterans who haven't served take something away from, I mean, you know, in the Indiegogo, I, I, I mentioned something in there about, you know, you often hear people remark, thank you for your service. I've heard it. You've heard mm-hmm. it. And it's nice that people acknowledge. I mean, I, I was in, before, I was in after the Gulf war and before all this Iraq stuff. So when I hear it, I'm like, yeah, you know, I was a boss. It's me. <laughs> you know what I mean, but I understand why they say it. Yeah. But I think a lot of times people, and I don't fault them for this. You know, they say it because they don't really know what to say. But I don't think they really truly understand what those words mean. But I'm hoping when they watch this that those words are going to have new meaning for them. You know, when they sit down and watch this and listen to what these guys went through and the love they had for their squad leader and how they still carry that with them. Next time they see a guy in the airport walk up to him, they're going to think about that. Yeah, I hope, you know, well, I think it's therapeutic for all of us as well. I mean, you know, I served in the 90s and the 2000s a little bit here and there. But, uh, you know, I watched whatever you do after you watch this video, everybody go and watch the. I'm going to have a, a link to the stream, the, um, the the clip of what you've recorded so far. And I'm like, man. I need to know more. I need to know the full picture. I need to know what right. happened to all these guys. I need this to be a, a real film. Right. You know. Oh, it's going to be a real me film. Being selfish. Yeah. It's just me being selfish, but no, I, cause yeah. I've had other people watch it who never served in the military and they were pretty blown away by it, you know? Mm-hmm. And you know, my biggest fear was because I've known these guys so long was to sit them down and open up that can of worms, you know, and unpack all that stuff. I was always afraid that, you know, is this going to hurt them? Is it going to be bad for them? But I've already seen the opposite because every time I do these interviews afterwards and as, as emotional as they are, they all say the same thing, man, Mm -hmm. I, I I needed, I needed to get that out. Thanks. You know, and I got a text from, Castaneda, James Castaneda. He's the guy in the he's the guy in the middle of the trailer that always gets me where, you know, he just wanted to do his job that day. You know, but he couldn't. It's something he's got to live with. He's he's always had a hard time, you know, and his kids used to ask him every Veterans Day, "Would you go to our school with us and speak?" And he said he he texted me, he said I always stayed away from that. But this year after watching what you did, I went and he sent me a picture with him and his, it brought me to tears, man. It was a picture of him and his kids. He said, I I finally realize what I've been given. And it's these two beautiful kids who call me dad. And I read that man and I teared up. I was, I'm getting a little emotional thinking about it now, but I, I saw that and I said, that's why we're doing this. You know, that's why we're doing this. And I hope it helps other veterans who watch it. It's gonna, man. And so what we do is we go to Indiegogo. Um, I think I've donated like 50 bucks so far, but yep. I'm definitely going to do more than that. Um, next paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> I just but bought yeah, a lottery definitely. ticket. I always buy a lottery. I said, if I win, this this thing will be paid for. The scratch, the next scratch one I get, man. Right. But definitely, I'm definitely going to uh, be pushing this out there. And that's the thing is if you can't donate, and this is for the audience out there. If you can't donate, it's different nowadays. Now we have the power of social media. Mm. Push it out to your family, friends, associates, everybody. If you could donate a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars, it it adds up, man. A lot of people don't realize like that five, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars, that it repost, does. that hashtag, that whatever helps, man. And yeah. let's get this thing made, man. Um, whatever I could do to help you out. Uh, you know, we were talking about right before we, you and I both have full time jobs, and this is just kind of our the things we have to do to help the community out. But yeah, man, um, everybody go to Indiegogo. It's the gift. You know, do a little scrolling down there. 
and you are talking to the world famous Dave Neese. <laughs> Gotta give you some I props. Go that man. Far. Give you some props. I go that far. <laughs> I'm just a guy from Connecticut. Yeah, exactly. I appreciate you coming on, man. Is there anything you want to hey, throw out there where we could find you and where we could find anything? Uh, we're, we're all, you know, Facebook, Instagram is uh, at the gift documentary. Uh, we're also on Twitter at the gift doc. And uh, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, Indiegogo. So the gift doc. Okay. Um, appreciate you having January, us on or having me on. Yeah, man. January 1st, on behalf of the protectors, there will be another $100. And then if you guys uh, do anything as far as like auctions or anything like that, we'll th I'll throw a gift bag in there. We'll throw a whole bunch of swag. And Yeah, we're going to plan. I think we're going to have to do something else after this the campaign ends on January 9th. So after that, you know, I'm going to think about some other things to do. And we're still pitching. You know, we, we take pitch meetings. Yeah, and man. So keep pushing it. You got good people out there. Jocko, Rocco, yeah. everybody else is, is pushing for it, man. So. All right, man. Good job, man. I uh, really appreciate you coming on. This is uh, hey, thank you. Made by thank you. And then I'm going to try to end off here by adding adding the uh, the clip on here, man. So I'll, I'll take you off of here, and you could take off. I'm going to try to get this clip going for the audience out there. But All Dave, right, thanks a lot, man. Thanks, appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Hold on for a second here. Let's see if we could do this. When you go to combat, I lost your audio.